Live. So hello, everybody. Welcome to our last Work It Wednesday of the summer. Um, my name is Paula Houghton. I'm the Director of Special Projects at Foundations, Inc. Uh, we're the organization that's responsible for the Beyond School Hours National Education Conference. And uh, this is our way of bringing you a little bit of Beyond School Hours at home all summer long. And we really hope that you've enjoyed this series. Uh, today, uh, wrapping up the series, we've got uh, Bill Albert of STEMfinity and Jason Lindsay of Hooked on Science. And they're gonna show off some hands-on STEM learning activities that you can do at home or in person. Um, and they've also got a free Lego Steam Kit giveaway and the winner will be announced at the end of the session. I'm gonna put the link in the chat for you to sign up. And uh, don't worry, just because this is our final work at Wednesday of the summer doesn't mean that we're done with the learning. And next week, we've got our Perspectives from the Field talk show um, on Wednesday, September 16th in the same time slot, 1 Eastern. And our host, Sean Petty, will uh, talk with our special guest, Julia Wild about resilience. I'll post some information about that in the chat too. So with all those announcements out of the way, I will turn the show over to Bill and Jason. Take well, thank you, Paula. Hello, everybody. Welcome on this uh, uh, Wednesday. Um, I'm not sure about you guys where school started, but uh, my kids are starting the same day. So <laughs> all my kids are trying to get online. I have, I have four kids, but three here at home that, uh, so we're all battling over our, our Wi-Fi to stream this. But um, today I'm gonna be demonstrating uh, some different ways to stimulate your after school program with Jason Lindsay, which you can see here on the screen as well. Um, but I'm gonna give you a little introduction about STEMfinity and myself and, and Jason Lindsay. But, uh, Myself, um, I go by Bill um, on the taxes, so I have to put William Albert. Um, in the past, also, I've been uh, considered the most influential in STEM by the National After School Association. Um, but uh, STEMfinity, I started around uh, nine years ago um, out of my house, and it was more or less looking for ways to make STEM accessible, affordable, and give the hands to the students. So the, my ultimate goal um, you know, how are you supposed to know you want to explore science or engineering or math if you never get to sample it or try it out? Um, so say biology, if you never try anything out around biology, you don't know you want to be a biologist. <laughs> and so I, I've uh, compiled um, over the years, over nine years now, we have around 12,000 different resources that we offer from pre-K to college. Um, and and uh, we're known by a lot of uh, different educators as a one-stop STEM shop. So we're here to assist in in uh, consulting with you and finding um, you know, resources that can match up with your program based on grade level, number of students, um, whether it's a shared space or not. Um, now being virtual um, or online, we have a lot of other inexpensive things that you can do at home as well. So, um, but over the years, been able to uh, work with um, over 50,000 schools. Um, you know, prior to this, I worked with the company that developed curriculum around uh, Lego education. And in fact, today we're gonna to be doing a, a, a giveaway for Lego Education Spike Prime set. So um, as Paul mentioned, we'll be sharing that with you later on. So enough about me and Stemfinity, but I'm gonna pass it over to Jason Lindsay uh, with Hooked on Science. And Jason, you mind introducing yourself? No problem. I hope you were well, Bill, and everyone else as we continue to navigate a new world of virtual learning across America, really across the world. As Bill had said, my name is Jason Lindsay. I am a scientist by training. What kind of scientist am I? I am a meteorologist. So right now I am broadcasting from one of the television stations that I work with. Um, I'm not a full-time meteorologist, but I do do part-time weather in Lexington, Kentucky, as well as Evansville, Indiana as a meteorologist. Right now I am in Lexington, Kentucky at WTVQ to where we will be doing some cool science. I'll quickly show you some things here in the studio, a little uh, tour, if you will, and then we'll get to more of a detailed tour a little bit later. But this is the weather center that we do all the weather from. To the right as I pan, or my right at least, you'll notice the FOMA key wall over there, and the new set is over here. We call that the five bank because there's five monitors. We call that the three bank because there's three monitors. There's the news desk and so on. So we'll be doing the science experiments from here. I left television back in 2007, I think it was, to start a business called Hooked on Science. Around that time or a little bit after that, I actually met up with Bill through a conference or maybe through email. And since then, we've partnered to get America excited about science, technology, engineering, mathematics, 
add the art in there, you get steam, add the R in there, you get stream, you get the point, trying to get everyone excited about learning all of those different topics for that acronym. Um, so since 2007, been doing Hooked on Science, visited schools all across the United States, been across the world doing science experiments, uh, learning more about science. I think Bill and I recently went to Brazil as well as over toward places like Germany with Bayer to learn more about farming and science as well. So that's a little bit about Hooked on Science. The goal is to get kids excited about science, to provide uh, amazing, mind-blowing science experiments for everyone, including educators. Um, you know, I visit everything from schools uh, to colleges to uh, senior citizen centers. Uh, the list goes on. All kinds of different places doing some pretty cool science. And my big push is using everyday ingredients from around the house. So in other words, you don't have to have a high-tech science lab to get your kids excited about science, whether those kids are your students or those kids are your very own kids. You can use ingredients from around the house, and that's kind of what we're going to focus on today. You will find a free experiment each week at hookedonscience.org and more. We'll elaborate on that a little bit later, but you'll notice Bill has pulled up uh, some of my recent appearances on America's Most Watched Morning Show. I've been on the Fox and Friends, RFD TV, all across America, television stations doing some pretty cool science experiments. You can watch all of these videos at the hookedonscience.org website. But in the meantime, Bill, I'll let you play this so folks can see some of the uh, different things we've done. If it's glitching just a little bit, you can actually go watch that video with your family and so on with audio and all that good stuff, you know, virtual learning. Uh, this is one of the problems that we have, uh, this kind of stuff here. Uh, but you can watch it all there at hookedonscience.org. Here we were doing some science with Kathy Lee and Hoda, as you know, now uh, Kathy Lee has retired from television, uh, was able to get her on a hovercraft there with Jenna Bush, uh, also done science with folks like uh, Kelly Clarkson there on the Today Show, as well as John Cena, Harry Connick Jr. and more uh, there in New York City um, with some pretty cool science overall. Supposed to be planning some spooky science. We'll see what happens uh, with that with the Today Show. I'm working with my producers there to head back uh, this fall to do some spooky science there on uh, now it has changed from Kathy Lee and Hoda to uh, Hoda and Jenna. But as you can see there, we were doing some cool science with uh, Kathy Lee on a hovercraft, there's John Cena, as well as uh, the tablecloth trick for holiday science. There's a bunch of holiday science experiments. All you gotta do is click on holiday STEM at hookedonscience.org. Instant snowstorm right there. That experiment, so uh, right after it was done, the producers were yelling for hair, makeup, wardrobe to the studio immediately. Typical that for my science experiments. We're turning uh, Hoda and uh, Kathy Lee into a human circuit there. Now you're watching some spooky science done a couple years ago to where we did some cool stuff. We turned a hair dryer there into a ping pong ball launcher. We're launching film canisters, all kinds of fun, different stuff. Popping a balloon with the sharpest thing I know in orange, trying to refrain from those kinds of experiments now until we can get a uh, vaccine or some way combat uh, COVID-19. We don't wanna fill up a bunch of balloons with air or do experiments that mix air or so on, at least right now, until we can uh, kind of um, conquer this vicious virus. Pretty cool. Thank you, Bill, for playing yes. that. Thank you, Jason, for the introduction. And, and obviously, you know, you've uh, been able to impact, you know, millions of students with your work, uh, whether it's through assemblies or so on. Um, but uh, this is something that I think um, you guys will see Jason, Jason's very passionate about what he, what he does and, and uh, is here to help you guys today on exploring ways to integrate STEAM or STEM into your um, after school program. So now let me continue on. Um, so we did create a poll for you guys to go through. Um, Paul, do you mind? Let's see, I think I can put that on here. Can everybody see the poll? If you give me a thumbs up, I'm not sure if you guys can see this or not. If you guys would go through and complete this poll real quick, these are some questions I want to learn about you guys and see how you've been implementing STEM or STEAM in your programs 
and let us know, you know, um, there should be some questions there. So go ahead and start answering those. I think it should be available for you to, uh, to utilize. No, it's not. Um, it's not? If not, you no. can't click on it. Cool. Interesting. Um, Paul, do you know how I can get this to, the there we go. Administ the administrator made us panelists and hosts, so we can't vote. It should work now. It should work now. It's working, thank you. All right. No problem. <laughs> so Sorry see, about that. That's all right. So we should see some real time results on whether you're using uh, Steam in there. Uh, looks like for some reason it's still not working, though, from what I can tell. It says 044 voted. Um, any suggestions there, Paula? Hmm. Oh, oh. oh. there's a vote. Okay. <laughs> All right. So yeah, go through and click on those if you don't mind. Um, I just want to get some feedback as to how many of you guys are implementing STEM or STEAM in your programs and get a feel for what's working, what's not working, et cetera. Because um, that is a big part is, uh, you know, network with your um, other after school professionals in the field and see kind of what's, what's worked well with your programs. So I'll wait till we get about half of the entries. So we have 15 of 44, if you guys don't mind filling that out for me real quick. Getting up there. All right, 19. And here they come in, they're rolling in quick now. So, all right, so I'd say it's overwhelming response. Everybody's offered STEAM programs in the after school um, programs and, and I'm sure summer as well. And that's something that at STEMfinity we, we pride ourselves in is the uh, summer programming uh, where we have prepackaged resources for you guys to utilize um, that have everything, including the curriculum and resources and, and material. Um, do you use hands-on or virtual online activities to address STEAM? So this is a, a, a new version. Uh, I don't think most of us were very much hands-on and not so much virtual. Um, we're all kind of adapting to the, the world around us. And uh, that's why I see there's a lot more of the both. Uh, doing virtual and hands-on. Um, this is, like I said, a newer approach to it, but it, it is something, there are some good resources out there, um, such as, I only heard of Coder Z, but you could actually uh, program a virtual robot um, with a variety of different languages. And um, it, it basically the same as if you were to program a, a real robot. And so you can see the, uh, the actions uh, working that way. Uh, so yeah, you could have the, the real Lego robot and programming the virtual version as well. So that would be a good combination of both. So it looks like there's quite a few there. So let me continue down here. So what STEAM programs do you offer? Looks like the majority are gonna be on the science. So Jason, Lindsay, we're, we got a good, good group of scientists here. Um, a lot of arts, which we like to see. We do a lot of makerspace resources, um, whether it's cardboard construction, um, you know, different ways to get the, the creativity, you know, creative juices um, flowing for the students. Uh, robotics been pretty popular, looks like, math. Um, I know that science and math and technology are, you know, key areas that you have to integrate. So uh, 3D printing, a few, VR, AR is kind of a, a newer area and drones, a newer area as well. So I understand why those are lower. Um, what works or doesn't work? Um, from what you guys can tell is a combination of both. We feel that that, that blended approach has been a, a good way to, to approach uh, teaching uh, your students about STEM or STEAM. So good to see the majority are working that way. And um, in the chat, do you guys mind let me know what some of the other is? Looks like we have quite a few other um, for what works and doesn't work. Um, let me pull up the chat in here. And Let's see here, let me see um, if you guys could type in some things that uh, are the other areas. Um, anybody? All right, I'll, I'm not seeing anything quite yet. Two new messages. All right, so we have family engagement in virtual. Yep, materials and supplies are for virtual. Yep, definitely some areas. So, you know, there, there's quite a bit more that you can be doing. Um, that way, so very good. And then have you noticed the effectiveness of hands-on learning? 100% uh, yes, and that's what we're gonna try to walk you through on, on how hands-on learning is very effective, um, which seems like y'all already know that. <laughs> and how do you suggest we make hands-on STEAM activities accessible for students? Um, looks like affordability, offering inexpensive resources, which we'll show you several today. Um, Jason Lindsay has a variety of things you can find from around the house to, to teach uh, science 
um, or STEM uh, today. And then virtual combined with hands-on as well. So, well, great. I, I appreciate you guys submitting those responses. Those are very helpful. Um, there we go. And let me go back to the, if we could, let's see here, stop sharing that. Um, we click the polls out. All right, so let's learn about you. So real quick, um, Paul, if you don't mind putting in the chat bar, we're gonna be giving away a Lego Education Spike Prime set. This is a, a newer resource that came out beginning of the year. Um, it uh, allows your students to explore, you know, drag and drop, but also Python and, and kind of expanding their, um, you know, from like the we do set. So typically you start with your basic uh, Lego bricks and then expand to the we do, which is some simple machines and, and uh, beginning uh, level of coding. And then you, this is gonna be more middle school appropriate. And after that is uh, Mindstorm ZB3, which I'm sure a lot of you guys are familiar with or, or have done robotics competitions with. So this is a, a set that we're, we're doing and, and we actually have recently um, partnered with Lego Education on offering uh, summer and after school solutions or out of school time solutions. So we have different bundles with curriculum and, and everything uh, for you, which um, we can show you later on. But let me go to the next slide. Um, and then also Jason Lindsay will be giving away a Hooked on Science lab book. Jason, you have a quick minute to describe the, the lab book and what that is? Yes, basically the lab book um, includes a lot of physical science stuff. So the lab book has everything covered from kindergarten through fifth grade when it comes to physical science. So in kindergarten, they're typically learning about pushes and pulls. In first grade, light and sound. Second grade, matter. Third grade, pushes and pulls. Fourth grade, uh, energy is the big focus. Fifth grades matter. So it covers all six of those topics with hands-on science experiments uh, inside of the guide, along with quizzes and more, videos all right there. Um, and I will be giving away that whole book. You can use it for your, uh, not your entire school, but your class. I'll let you, you're free to use it for your entire class uh, overall. But uh, yeah, it has lots of hands-on science stuff. It goes with a, a little character called the Beaker character. Uh, and it helps uh, kids better understand physical science concepts, kindergarten through fifth grade um, by using hands-on science and everyday ingredients from around the house. Awesome, well, thank you, Jason. And um, yeah, Paul has shared the link and we're gonna be announcing the winners at the very end of this workshop today. So we'll have two winners and, and we'll make sure we get that shipped out to you ASAP. All right, um, continuing on. So what we have, um, yeah, you can enter to win these two different resources. We just described that. But uh, who, who here has seen this diagram before? Um, I guess maybe raise of hands, anybody? Yes, no. <laughs> um, so this is the learning pyramid. Um, basically our, our approach at STEMfinity is to get um, the, the teachers to be on more and the students be more on the particip participatory teaching methods. So right now, uh, Jason and I have been doing the, the top of the pyramid, which is the lecturing, uh, some reading and some audio visual, which is a lot of your virtual learning is gonna be, you know, that, the five, 10, 20% retention of their knowledge. Um, the goal is to get down a little bit further where they're, you know, demonstrating, um, where they're, you know, going to be, um, you know, basically eventually get to where they're, they're practicing by doing, which is doing the hands-on experiments. Um, you know, we, we know the virtual learning there, it's, you know, due to the circumstances we're, we're pushing the virtual, um, but, uh, um, you know, we still feel there needs to be some sort of hands-on component involved with that virtual, which from the, the poll earlier, looks like many of you guys have already taken that approach uh, to it. And so we've done a lot of uh, implementation into after school programs in the sense that, uh, for instance, like Title One, um, well, they'll, they'll order you know, thousands of these inexpensive you know, $10, $15 kits and disperse that out at lunchtime when they're handing out lunches. And so that's worked out well um, over the course of the summer months. Um, but uh, you know, everybody has their own approach to it and has different restrictions depending on their state and city um, on how they can get these you know, the equipment in their, their students' hands. Um, but uh, the ultimate level is to get in, in that 90% where they're actually teaching others. And so if you could have it where it's a kit where everybody uses, but then you have one that one student that really, you know, just loves it and takes off with it, um, you know, maybe have that student be a, a mentor for the other students and demonstrate that to them. So these are, are things just that we're trying to get uh, the kids to, to do hands-on activities um, and explore. And of course, the retention of the information will be a lot higher than 
practice learning or being lectured to, you know, via the uh, the internet. So <laughs> um, that's our approach. Um, how do we stimulate your program? So here um, we encourage you guys to plan activities and integrate two or more subject areas. And so I'll be sharing a, a STEM planning worksheet uh, that uh, helps you think of, let's say you wanna do, oh, I don't know, let's say robotics. Well, robotics, the, you're gonna be combining math, science, technology. There's some arts involved that you can maybe decorate your robot. Um, there's a lot of different ways that you can integrate all different subject areas into, into one um, activity or one um, project. And so the goal is to not just think of them in, in silos like science and math, but try to figure out a blended approach um, throughout. And so what will be, like I said, I'll be sharing this worksheet with you and, and it'll be available for download afterwards as well. Um, but at Stimfinity, we, we have a lot of resources that take that blended approach to teaching STEM or STEAM because um, we feel it should be a, a cross-curricular, you know, blended approach uh, to teaching and learning. So a little, little surveys and studies. Um, we, we feel also at Stimfinity that the after-school um, area and summertime programs are ideal for implementing STEM and STEAM. Um, typically in their typical classroom hours, they are, uh, they're coming, they're looking for you to, to provide something different, something with excitement. Um, you know, when they're in a math class all day or science class, um, you know, or English class, let's say, uh, they are, uh, they, they just, you know, there's a lot of lecturing and not so much of the hands-on. So they come to you at after school looking for that, that uh, the excitement with hands-on and, and something different. Um, but I know as an after school program provider, um, a lot of you face some significant hurdles. And these are things that we've found to be pretty consistent. It's insufficient funding. Um, I know many of you probably have a 21st century community learning center grant. The issue there is that's usually three to five years and uh, you have to figure out how to make that sustainable. So we have some different grant resources on our website to assist in, in providing funding for the STEM resources and for, uh, there's some grants that do offer staffing and uh, you know, programming um, funds. Um, second hurdle is lack of knowledge about existing curriculum. And so we would, uh, um, you know, we have former educators in our office. So if you call in, we can help navigate through our website and those different products. And, and we have 125 different uh, STEM or STEAM vendors that we work with. So we have a large uh, toolbox full <laughs> of material that we can then kind of align based on your needs. And we, we are constantly vetting them out so we know what works and what doesn't work. And uh, we're not necessarily pushing one product or the other. We're, we're just making sure that what you're implementing is going to work for your program. Uh, lack of professional development in STEM. And this is where uh, Jason and I have partnered up for, uh, I think going on seven years now to offer our STEM 101 professional development. And so it's something that, uh, let's say you order a variety of resources and looking for a way to um, blend that into your curriculum. Uh, we would come in and illustrate how to do all that. And we would uh, um, you know, have additional resources to, to help you along the way to make sure you're not, you know, kind of remove that fear of, of teaching STEM. And uh, we also work with Click to Science, which has a whole range of different resources available as well uh, for out of school time professionals. And the final, what's that? Oh, so, I'm sorry. <laughs> but the final hurdle is the lack of partnerships available in STEM. So um, I come from a very rural area. And you know, when you're out in the middle of nowhere, it's hard to find partners that have a similar interest or similar passion to, to get um, kids and teachers you know, passionate about STEM. Uh, so, but, you know, for the, the more urban areas, typically you would have an engineering firm, uh, you would have, um, you know, scientists you can access, um, but also going back to the rural area, there's a lot of farmers that are STEAM or STEM professionals that uh, you can access as well and have them come and talk about how they can use STEM in their, their profession, you know, day in, day out and share, you know, kind of connect the dots for them. Okay. Um, but these are the two worksheets. Um, let's see how we're doing on time. All right, so um, I'm gonna fly through these, but these are gonna be available uh, for you guys afterwards. The STEM planning worksheet I mentioned before where you can, you're, you're basically write down the activity and then you try to show the different categories that can, or different uh, subject areas you can work with. And then the 15 questions to ask before selecting a STEM activity, we did that with Click to Science years ago. Um, so whether it's you know, hands-on, whether it's safe, um, 
you know, a whole range of different resources, whether it's aligned with standards. So those are some things you want to question before you go and select uh, a resource. And those are the type of things that we'll ask you to, um, if we're to call, we'll kind of walk you through those questions and align things for you. But, um, um, but uh, that is um, some different, and these are going to be available afterwards, like I said. Okay. But uh, now I'm going to pass it over to Jason. We, we want to make sure we get the excitement. You know, like I said, the retention of lecturing um, is around 5%. <laughs> and so now we get to the excitement of uh, Jason demonstrating these five activities. And so the first one, uh, well, I'll let Jason walk through them. But these are all, all of Jason's activities are actually available on his website, which is hookedonscience.org. So make sure you guys click on that later on and, and check it out. But I'm going to pass it over to you, Jason. Thank you, Bill. I hope everyone is safe and well as we continue to battle COVID-19. I know it's a very unique school year all across America as we adventure into virtual learning. I mean, virtual learning is really not anything new, but everybody or the majority of your school doing it is fairly new, and we're still working out the kinks. Um, the only downside for virtual learning is that uh, we don't really get to do as much exit. You have to force hands on science, let's put it that way. Otherwise, the kids are just reading a bunch, watching a bunch of videos and all that good stuff. And Bill just showed you how we want kids to eventually absorb that information through hands on science. And we know they've mastered when they can reteach it or whenever they can talk about it or apply it in the real world. Very important, very key when it comes to learning hands on science. Virtual is not the way to do hands on science. Um, it's a good component to learning science, but it's not the best way uh, at the end of the day. It's really getting your hands dirty, exploring the world around you, doing mind-blowing science. I am a working scientist, meaning that when I go into classrooms, schools bring in a scientist. I'm a meteorologist, born and raised in a town called Bowling Green, Kentucky. I don't know if you know where Kentucky is, in the eastern part of the United States. Some of you may be from there. We're known for horses. We are known for uh, being the bluegrass state. There's a lot of stuff in Kentucky. If you've ever been down south in Florida to the big giant geometric dome at one of the amusement parks, it's this gigantic white dome. Spaceship Earth, I think is what it was called at one time. Those tiles were made in Kentucky. The birthday song started in Kentucky. Also in Eastern Kentucky, Floyd County, we are known for the most consumption of Mountain Dew. So we're known for some good things and some bad things, but bottom line, I think every state is. Um, as I mentioned, I am a meteorologist. You'll notice behind me, I'm about to click a clicker that will show you the United States. Here in the Western part of the United States, they just had to deal with a snowstorm. Any of you from Colorado, don't you can leave a comment at the bottom of the screen there. But if you are in Colorado, Wyoming, uh, out toward the Rocky Mountains, you've been dealing with a lot of snow and that snow is still falling from the front range there for the Mile High City back toward Pueblo and the Grand Junction switched over to rain closer to the Nebraska, Colorado border there, as well as the Kansas border. Uh, bottom line, let me show you a little closer. Here's a look at Aspen. Here's a picture from Aspen right now. It's actually snowing in Aspen and they have some snow right there on the mountain. Just wanted to quickly show you that, kind of give you an idea of how we not only track weather here in Kentucky, but we do all across the United States. Time for some mind blowing science, right? Uh, we're gonna do five experiments. Now it's been cloudy here. We may not get to the last one. I know that I have about 25 to 30 minutes to do this. So we need to start wrapping this up near the top of uh, the hour, at least need to leave Bill some time at the top at about 1.55 on to kind of wrap up everything. Uh, so we need to get going on these experiments. The first one that Bill had up, I think, was the um, uh, egg drop, if I was correct on that, if I remember correctly. Uh, the egg drop is a cool experiment. It's an experiment, you know, I mentioned certain grade levels, but you and I both know as a teacher that when, you know, you're reteaching concepts throughout the year, most of the time in kindergarten, first and second grade, those kids are mastering how to do math and reading, science and social studies is kind of put on the back burner. No matter how hard we push, that's just what happens. Teachers run out of time during the day. We know that they're superheroes, but they can't make the day longer than what it already is uh, at the end of the day. So here's the bottom line. Most of the time, 
depending on your state, like in Kentucky, we're tested in science in the fourth grade. In Tennessee, it starts in the third grade. Uh, in Missouri, you're tested in the fifth grade. In Illinois, you're tested in the fifth grade for science. So most likely, kids aren't going to get science till you're tested in it. So teachers are going to be reteaching science. Let's say you're tested in the fourth grade, kindergarten through fourth grade concepts. So some of the stuff I mentioned today will be grade level wise, but remember, you're probably going to be reteaching a lot of this stuff anyway, depending on the year that you're taught or uh, tested in science. So the one that I want to focus on is pushes and pulls. Again, that's a kindergarten and third grade concept with a next generation science standards. If you're wondering where I'm getting these grade levels from, next generation science standards. Everything that I have there at hookdownscience.org is connected to the next generation science standards. So inside of my glass, I have some water. I'll get a little bit closer so you can see that I have filled my container more than three quarters of the way with toilet water. I'm sorry, regular water. Um, what we're going to do next is then place a pie pan right on top. Everything has to be lined up just right. Then a toilet paper tube and then a raw egg. Yeah, a raw egg, which means you could be making a big mess. That's okay. That's what science is all about. But when you put the egg on top of the toilet paper tube, it's important that you don't do it like this. Do not do it like that. Okay, you got to do it like this horizontal probably going to fall on the floor and break horizontal not vertical it gets stuck in there so a push or a pull is a force a push or a pull is a force we've mastered that by the time we've ended kindergarten in most cases with next generation science standards some things require more of a push than others for example if you have more mass that's more force when you get to middle school you connect that to the second law of motion force equals mass times acceleration kindergartners aren't going to do that they just know or will learn through trial and error, trying it themselves, it's harder to push a wagon with rocks in it than it is a wagon without rocks. Because the one with rocks, by the time you get to middle school, you've mastered it, it has more mass. More mass, more force, that's the second law of motion. First law says this egg, this toilet paper tube, this pie pan, this glass of water is gonna stay there until something moves it. Once it's moved, it's gonna keep going until an outside force stops it. Easy law of motion. We start really mastering that by third grade. And then the third law, for every action, there's an opposite and equal reaction. Uh, so with all of that in mind, how in the world do I get this egg in here without ever touching the egg? Do you have a hypothesis? Anybody want to write their hypothesis at the bottom? You can try to make this as interactive as possible. Uh, I can always pick some people. Let me walk over to my computer screen and see who's at the top. Let's see. Bill's seen this a million times. I won't ask him. Uh, how about Danny Mitchell? What do you think, Danny? Oh, I see some stuff coming up at the bottom. Boom, apply force to the pie pan. Okay, like that. That's from Callie. Good job, Callie, to all. Anybody else? Danny, did you have a hypothesis? I can't see you. Don't know? Okay. I like what Callie said, apply a force. And that's exactly what I'm going to do. Apply a force. But it's important that you keep this in mind. As soon as you fill the pie pan, kind of hit the palm of your hand, stop. Because if you keep going, you're going to knock everything over. So for those kindergartners, first graders, second graders who are still developing a lot of fine motor skills, you're probably going to want to hold the cup while they do it. Don't say you can't do this because you're going to make a mess. Actually do it because you are going to make a mess. And also, as we are doing this virtual learning, please understand that when you assign kids science experiments, it has to be ingredients from around the house. If it's not from around the house and they've got to get it at their local convenience store. And what does every community have? A dollar store or a Walmart. So make sure you can get it at the most convenient store. It's a convenience store <laughs> possible when it comes to the ingredients and make sure it's as affordable as possible. Second, uh, make sure it's simple. Not so simple that they're not learning a concept, but you don't need an elaborate experiment, especially in K through five. They just need to really focus on the scientific method while we're virtually learning and mastering concepts through play and through fun. And finally, make sure you help parents understand that it's okay to make messes and that the experiment's not gonna work the first time every time. Maybe not the second time and contrary to popular belief, the third time is not always a charm. But you keep going and you keep going and you keep doing it until you master it. I better move this out of the way because we don't need water everywhere on that side of the table. So I'm gonna apply a force and when I apply the force, the pie pan and the toilet paper tube should go in that direction. The egg should resist the change. We call that inertia. Then gravity should pull it into 
the cup of water. I say should, because science doesn't always work the first time, even with a guy who's done this a million times. Okay, let's try it. Three, uh-oh, two, <laughs> whoa, yeah. And it went right in. The egg goes all the way to the bottom. It's sunk all the way down there. It's safe, it's not broken. Pretty cool experiment. It all went that direction, <laughs> ironically. Pretty cool. The science worked and the toilet paper tube even landed inside of the pie pan on the floor. Let's do that one more time, just in case if you were blinking or you know you are at home, you may be dealing with your own kids. I have four kids myself. And yes, they're always making science messes and they can get by with it with me when they say it's science, but they can't with their mom. Okay, let's put the egg back on top, just like that. And I'm gonna apply a force. Now, when we did this on the Today Show, I think it was summer science, I forget what it is, but we did five glasses of water, five toilet paper tubes, five raw eggs, and we had a big tray. So one of those big serving trays, I hit the serving tray as hard as I could. It went one direction. All the glasses stayed where they were at. Toilet paper tubes went one direction. All the eggs fell in at once. On live TV, it worked perfect. It doesn't always happen that way, by the way. Three, two, go. Egg number two goes right in. Practice, of course. First, if you're gonna do this as a demonstration in front of a bunch of students, and uh, because it may not work the first time. And of course you wanna look like you're the expert whenever it comes to doing science in the classroom. Uh, although I do make sure every once in a while I make a mistake on TV because I don't want kids to, uh oh, kids to um, always see me do it right the first time when it doesn't even happen the first time with me, that's kind of a false sense of reality. So I'm glad when science experiments don't work always first time on TV, for example, Back at 2013, we had put some calcium carbide inside of a pumpkin, carved the eyes, the nose, the mouth out, put the pieces back in, added water, a chemical reaction happened, I ignited the gas in the eyes, the nose, and the mouth supposed to come out, right? The whole thing blew up. It wasn't supposed to happen that way. Pieces went everywhere, all over the place, knocked me in the head, had my goggles on, that's key, that's very important. So yeah, science doesn't always happen, even with those scientists who do it often. And a lot of times. Okay, so these experiment guides are available uh, there at the website and we're going to provide them for you as well. That was called the egg drop if you're taking notes. The excellent egg drop is what I like to call it. It's one I like to do around Easter time. You can even color the eggs, all that good stuff, or even Thanksgiving, you know, when the entire family is around and, um, you know, you're wanting to amaze the family as Thanksgiving dinner is actually being cooked or getting ready to be uh, fulfilled there at your house. Okay, let's move on to the next one, and that is the balloon blow up. I have a vase uh, here. Hopefully my wife isn't missing this one. Uh, and you'll notice there's something in the bottom. It looks like water. So this one's all about matter. Second graders. Jason, it seems like we lost you. It looks like we did lose him on that. Um, I will just share my screen and then we'll wait for him to, to come back on board here. So hopefully he knows that he's not being seen <laughs> uh, right now, which is unfortunate. Um, but uh, let me do this. So can everybody see the Hooked on Science balloon blow up? This is the next activity he's going to do. And, um, oh, I think he might be coming back on board here. So the chance, but, uh, um, so all these activities that like you can see down here bottom are available on hookedonscience.org. Okay. Can, can you hear me? I'm back, I think, yes. There, I can hear you, so i Okay, <laughs> what did I get to? Yeah. <laughs> I was laughing along about science and kind of lost the connection. Um, we were talking about uh, chemical reactions, right? Okay, if that gets- Yes. Are we still there? Did I lose you again? Nope, you're here. We can hear okay, you. Okay, good, good. Let me maximize my screen so I can see. Okay, so we were to the fact about matter. Uh, we describe matter by its observable properties. I can smell it and it's not water, it's vinegar. Uh, we might use vinegar in things like salad. We might use vinegar, a teaspoon of vinegar to get rid of hiccups. 
At least that's what folklore says. Inside of my balloon, I have a bunch of baking soda. Baking soda on the inside. How I got it on the inside is I opened it up and then had a friend pour the baking soda in, okay? What I'm gonna do next, you and I both know what happens when you mix together vinegar and baking soda. You get a chemical reaction. That chemical reaction gets you something new called carbon dioxide gas. So kids should start mastering at least by fifth grade for sure, before then, hopefully, that we get carbon dioxide gas uh, in our atmosphere. We breathe it out as humans. Plants take it in and through their food making process, photosynthesis, they turn that into uh, oxygen for us in their own food, glucose. Uh, so we're about to create carbon dioxide gas, which should make the balloon inflate. So let's go ahead and mix it together. And yes, you see it right there. I can hear. I don't eat my science experiment. Uh, smell, I can touch it. Oh, it's, it's kind of cold. What kind of reaction do we call that in science? So we have two kinds of reactions, if you will, endothermic, exothermic. Exothermic gives off heat, hand warmer in your hand gives off heat. Endothermic takes in the heat, it gets cold. This is an endothermic reaction. It gets cold overall. So we created our gas, the gas filled up the balloon, the balloon expanded, it got bigger, pretty cool science experiment. You can do all of these on a bigger scale. I've talked about this one and using five glasses and five eggs. You know those waters that you put in your, those big giant jugs of water you put in your house and it goes on a stand? You can use one of those containers, fill it up with vinegar and use the punch balloons to do it on a bigger scale. So you can always do these on a bigger scale as well. That one called the balloon blow up. So we've done the excellent egg drop and the balloon blow up. Let's move to the next one. And that has to do with this one right here. You will notice I have a container of water. This one's called the gravity defying bottle. I have filled my bottle all the way up with water. You gotta put more water in there, by the way. Another pushes and pulls here. Um, this one here, I'm going to add more water until it overfills. So keep going, keep going, and it's overfilled. You see that right there. Let me zoom in on the camera so you can see it just a little bit closer. I'm going to zoom in as close as I can get. Let it autofocus there. And we'll see. Okay, there we go. Now, if you look at the very top, you will notice it kind of, it's not concaved or dented in, it's convex, it's protruding over the top of the container, just like that. So that's key, that's very important, that you have a bubble, if you will, of water right on top of your water bottle. Also, notice this is not an ordinary water bottle. Notice how rough and tough it is, it's harder to squeeze, uh, it's similar to a Gatorade, but I think it's a Powerade bottle, but Gatorade bottles will work the same as so will some juice bottles. You can't just use a regular water bottle. It's too flimsy on the sides. You got to make sure that you have a bottle that is pretty rough and tough when it comes to uh, doing this experiment. Ping pong ball right on top, and I'm going to move it around a little bit. I'm going to grab this pie pan because sometimes this doesn't work the first time and would create a big mess. So I'm gonna take this, I have the water just like that. The next thing I'm going to do is slowly turn this upside down. Slow is key, by the way. And voila, see that? Yeah, it's staying there. Not magic, but science. Slowly go back the other way. Slowly, 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 slowly. It's not glued on at all. So here's the science. We know gravity is pulling down. That's an obvious, right? I mean, it pulls my ping pong ball to my pie pan. But there's another force overtaking gravity. So we talk about balance and unbalanced forces. So at the point to where it's on there, we have balanced forces acting on it. Now, if the water were to come out, unbalanced forces were acting on it. But balanced forces were acting on it. 
we have air pushing against the ping pong ball harder than gravity was pulling down. Also, we create a little suction at the top, a little suction. Again, overfill my water bottle again, little bubble on top. Next, stick it on there like that, move it around. This time, I'm gonna be brave and I'm gonna get closer to the camera. Okay, hold on, let me turn my camera monitor around here without making a big mess. Uh-oh, I don't know if this is ready or not. Hold on. <laughs> There's a lot of electronics in the floor, so I gotta make sure I don't create a big mess. Okay, here we go. Slow, 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 slow. Upside down, there we have it. No magic, slow. Don't squeeze the size of the water bottle. Turn it back the other way. And yes, not glued on. Pretty cool. So what I typically do is, you know, the Gatorade bottles come in, is it two, four, six, eight, ten? Is it five on each side? And we pour them in a big jug. We drink those. Uh, did I lose you all? I hope I didn't lose you. I didn't lose you. Okay. Uh, I don't... Uh, I don't, uh, we pour them all out and then those small ones, the small Gatorade bottles are better uh, for kids. Just make sure they're not squeezing the sides when they're doing it. And a rough and tough bottle like a Gatorade bottle or a Powerade bottle or juice bottle will work a little bit better. So that's called the gravity defying bottle. I'm not paying attention to comments at the bottom. Have there been any good questions? Uh, no, okay, good. We'll take more questions in a minute. Let's move on to this other one. I don't think we're gonna have time to get to popping a balloon inside of a balloon, but I will show you how to set it up before we leave there. Uh, I have a bag of water. This is all about matter again, anything that takes up space and has mass. So my bag of water, it's filled about, uh, was that little, maybe a third of the way, a third of the way. And then I have some sharp pencils understand that they are round pencils. So in other words, they're not the yellow pencils that are shaped like, is it an octagon or a hexagon? It's a round pencil. And what you wanna do is this, hold this above your favorite student's head and then jab pencils through it. And it should stay exactly where it's at. And the water shouldn't leak out, no leaks. Again, here's the deal. By the time they get to fifth grade, they should have mastered that matter is made up of small pieces. Matter is made up of small pieces. The smallest unit of matter is an atom. You put together atoms and you get molecules. For example, H2O, two hydrogen, one oxygen, gives me something called dihydrogen monoxide called water. Dihydrogen monoxide. Dihydrogen, di, two, monoxide, mon, one oxygen. Another word for water, dihydrogen monoxide. Pretty cool. The water, the H2O, the dihydrogen monoxide stays right there inside of here without it leaking out everywhere, all because the smaller pieces of matter are holding hands tightly around the pencils, keeping them, the water molecules, from leaking out everywhere all over the place. Okay, we have about five more minutes. I wanna show you how to set up this other one really fast um, and if we have time I will connect to my phone and then and we will go outside I have a real quick Jason board. can you hear me yes yes and so yeah just how about two minutes on this one and then I'm going to go through your website okay. and our website and so I'll just show you how to do it really fast dark colored balloon dark orange maroon black um, any dark colored balloon is very important. Magnifying glass, this is about energy, what you learn about in the fourth grade. So we have less than 120 seconds left. I'm gonna stretch this out. I'm gonna stretch this out. I'm gonna roll the darker colored balloon up, roll it up just like this. And then I'm gonna take and force this balloon inside of the clear balloon, just like that. Oh, try not to drop it in the way. And then I'm gonna blow up the orange balloon inside of the clear balloon. No meteorologists are not full of hot air. 
it in the clear when popped, but you don't want it to do that since we're out of time. Keep trying that. These have been in my car for a very long time and the heat has weakened the rubber. Do not leave balloons in your car for a long time. But the point is you blow up the orange one, the dark colored one, you tie it and you drop it in. Then you blow up the clear one, tie it. The darker color should freely go within the clear balloon. Go outside, focus a beam of light on the dark colored balloon. The dark colored balloon should quickly pop. The reason why meteorologists tell you not to wear dark colored clothing in the summertime because you will get hotter. You wanna wear a white lab coat to look cool and keep cool, right? Do you have any quick questions? If not, I'll pass it on to Bill. Remember, hookedonscience.org has all these experiments. Don't forget to go like Hooked on Science on Instagram, as well as Facebook, as well as Stimfinity. Just look for Hooked on Science and Stimfinity, like both, all that good stuff. You'll get experiments of the week and all that good stuff there as well. Thank you for taking time. Remember, I continue to think about you as we are battling this virus. And I know that you are going through a lot right now. Just hang in there before you know it things will get a little bit better each and every day. We just got to help each other out. Again, thank you so much, Bill. I'll pass that on to you. I think my two minutes is up by now. All right. Well, thank you, Jason. I appreciate your time. Um, what I want to do right now is walk you through um, Jason's website, which is hookedonscience.org. And so um, the video that I showed you earlier will be found up here in the Science on the Go. And so you'll see a bunch of videos up there, uh, the different links for his uh, social media. Um, experiment archive I was kind of where I wanted to highlight on on his page right here so those activities plus uh, many more you'll find uh, so you'll find different next you know there are a lot of next generation science standards um, but whether it's engineering design uh, life science earth science so a lot of activities that you can do uh, within here so um, you can see floating balloons uh, love potion flower <laughs> uh, whole range of things to, to work with there um, you know, Jason has, uh, if you want to learn more about him, that you'll find that right there. But he also has done uh, assemblies and um, workshops inside malls. Um, obviously, the uh, the TV connections and meter all just by trade. So he's uh, working scientists and uh, just is a great, great tool to uh, get your kids excited about uh, science and STEM. So that is Hooked on Science. Um, I'm also going to take you to our website, which is uh, stemfinity.com. And I have about uh, two or three minutes here. I'm just gonna walk you through. So what we've done is we've compiled more of like a clearinghouse for STEM resources. So you'll see there's science, technology, uh, so everything from flight simulators, robotics, et cetera, engineering resources broken out by grade level, math, uh, robotics, STEAM at home, which has been very popular the last six months um, as uh, most of us are learning or teaching our students from home, um, makerspace resources, um, virtual resources, summer programming, and then the and beyond covers everything from you know, drones to uh, furniture, et cetera. It's all, all within there. So, um, but there's four main areas I wanna to highlight. Uh, first thing is the free STEM resource page right here. As you click on that, you'll see we have uh, currently over a thousand different uh, free STEM resources compiled on this page. And so a lot of them are our partners such as Hooked on Science, uh, there's NASA does a lot of work uh, with us as well. Um, you'll see uh, Army Education Outreach Program and their e-cyber mission um, is a good one. Um, you know, just a lot of tools here that you can go through and, and dive into, um, you know, whether it's coding or, or science, et cetera, or video game design right here. Um, so you'll see the little um, thing pop up over each one, a little bubble which describes each one for you. So you can get a little idea of what, what it's about, or you can go at the top and whether it's women in STEM, STEM careers, um, all free STEM resources, coding, et cetera, you can filter it that way. So that's the first area we want, want to show you, and that's just getting past that fear of teaching STEM. Uh, the second hurdle is funding, which we talked about before. So on our STEM grants page, we have the verbiage um, from past successful grants that we can help share uh, with you. And uh, what you'll see is, is a compilation or, or directory of STEM grants. So we said a lot of you already have the 21st CCLC funding, um, but there's other funding as well as you scroll down these national and private grants, uh, which are focused on STEM and STEAM. And uh, so as you go through, some of them are, are um, you know, regional, um, some of them are national, um, but most of these that you'll see here are gonna be, you know, multiple states or, or nationwide. And uh, once you have that and uh, find out the resource you want to write in the grant, 
and uh, we can share the the, uh, the verbiage with you to plug that in. So that's the second hurdle. Third hurdle that uh, you all face is you're told that you need to implement STEM or STEAM and you don't know where to start. Uh, we have former educators in our office that can help navigate through the, the 12,000 resources we have on our website, such as like Lego Education Spike Prime Set. Um, this is the one that we're giving away here in a, in a few minutes. Um, so you'll see within here, a whole range of uh, uh, activities, and coding availability. There's a video you guys can watch later on as well and different resources to add to it. And then what, like I said before, we've bundled um, these manipulatives and Lego sets with curriculum. And so we have these uh, these unique sets uh, for whether it's summer camps or after school available on our website as well. So those are available, but um, go back to this page. Like I said, we can help navigate through whether it's uh, virtual learning, um, makerspace, uh, you know, different, uh, I'm sure you guys have heard of learning wrap-ups, Mango Math, um, here's the uh, virtual robotics toolkit, uh, some different, you know, at-home uh, bundles as well. So those are all available, plus many more, just as you browse through these different categories. And then the final thing, which I mentioned before, is the professional development. You'll see that in here. Uh, we have uh, our STEM 101 professional development with Jason Lindsay. And uh, so this is something we're working on a virtual um, STEM 101 currently, um, because before we used to do these assemblies and you know, large workshops um, with a lot of teachers and students. So we're kind of uh, adjusting that and so should have that available here pretty soon. Um, but that's all available at stemfinity.com and hooked on science and .org. And so make sure you check those out. Um, and then we go to our page here, one second. <laughs> and cancel. All right, so these are the final activities there. Um, those are the things I just walked you through and this, this PowerPoint presentation will be available afterwards as well. Um, here's Jason and I's contact information, um, but let me pull up the winners. So I have two different winners. The first winner, for the Lego Education Spike Prime set is going to be Stephanie Putt from Indiana. So Stephanie, if you can acknowledge that. Oh, <laughs> I see you wave your hands. <laughs> Congratulations on winning that set. Um, and so what afterwards, you'll see my contact information right here. If you don't mind emailing me, um, just uh, saying I won and then I'll get your contact information and, and send out to you. And then Jason with his lab book, um, the winner for that is Tina Writings from Oregon. Tina, let's see if you want to unmute yourself or if you can or not. <laughs> so Tina, yeah, but uh, make sure Tina that you email me as well. Uh, so you'll see my screen there. Oop, hold on here. <laughs> That's what we had for the Department of Education. Um, yeah, so just email me and then we'll go through. But uh, real quick, we have a few more minutes for Q&A. Um, I just wanted to make sure we get that announced. And so let's see what we have for on the chat side of things. Any questions for me or Jason? Any questions? I'll, I'll wait here a few more seconds. And congratulations to the winners. Yeah, but just know that you know, there's ways to, to implement STEM. It doesn't have to be expensive. There's a lot of free STEM resources we, we listed out there. Uh, Jason Lindsay has tons of um, activities that require minimal uh, resources. Yes, I know that it, it, you, know, you can't expect out of every student to have those, those resources, but if you, um, you know, maybe look for some uh, additional grant funding to, to help you out with that, that'd be great too. So, um, Anyways, well, Paul, I'm going to pass it back to you. I don't see too many questions here, but uh, make sure you guys uh, hit us up with any questions later on. Um, but we appreciate your time and hope you enjoy the remainder of your week. Thank you so much. Uh, and congratulations also to the winners. Um, that was a great way for us to end our summer series. So thank you again, Bill and Jason. Um, we will be sending out the recording after the webinar. And there's also a brief survey you can fill out to receive a certificate of attendance. I also posted that link for you in the chat. Thank you everyone for attending. And I hope that you join us next week for the Perspectives from the Field talk show. You can also follow us on social media with the information that was posted in the chat. Thank you all for joining us for this summer series at Wednesdays. And I hope that we see you next week at Perspectives. Thanks everyone for joining. <laughs>